Gaze into a mirror and what do you see? All right. In today's video, what I wanted to go over is the issue I'm having with my amp. The power light on it is flashing. So it's in uh, a protect mode or it's not getting enough power to the amp and it's not powering on. Oh, come on. So I wanted to go over the steps that are necessary to figure out and troubleshoot if you're having all if you're also having problems with your radio system or your um, audio equipment. So I installed this system over six years ago. I haven't had to touch it since. This is the first issue I've had. And what it used to do is when you drove the car, everything would be fine. It'd take like a minute and then the amp would kick on. And now it's slowly, slowly gotten worse. And, and you listen to it, here's what it sounds like. You just hear click, click, click. Click. Sounds like shit. I don't know if my mic on this camera can pick up the the sound that it's making, but see if you can hear it. It's like a crack, 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 crack. So the issue I'm having is now the amp won't turn on at all. It used to be delayed. It would take, it would turn on instantly before for a very long time. Here in the past like four or five months, it's slowly been turning on. It's gotten really, really bad. It's taken almost up to a minute and then the amp will kick on. Now the amp will not kick on at all and it just makes that clicking noise to the speakers. So I know I have an issue, obviously. I knew I had an issue before, but I've been del delaying it. So now I can make a video while I learn how to fix the problem at the same time. Just to show you guys, um, I know you've seen this book before. This is the book where I documented everything I've done to this car because I've had it for 12 years. Um, I installed this about six years ago. I did the install installation myself. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with uh, how horrible the CD player uh, sound system is from the factory on the G35. Uh, it, it eats CDs and when it eats them, you stick in an MP3 disc, which I used to think was cool because I could play MP3s. Uh, it would just give an error message. After two or three minutes, it'd go, err, err and then it wouldn't play at all. And you'd have to like shut it off and turn it back on, pop the CD out, stick it in, and it'd play for a little bit and you'd go through the same process again. So what I did is I, I removed that system, uh, the, the OEM system, and I installed Pioneer all around, Pioneer head unit. I put six and a halfs in the door. I took out the rear seat. I put six and a halfs in the back panels. And then I put six by nines up here in the rear deck. And then I hooked them up to a 760 watt Pioneer amp you can see right here and it's a four-way amp so it's running to uh, the four speakers in the back which would be the two six by nines and the six and a halfs okay guys for the record for those of you that don't know I actually have an IT degree and I'm in sales uh, I work on cars as a hobby so I am NOT a professional audio mechanic even though I installed uh, this amp and all these speakers by myself I'm just self-taught so I wanted to go ahead and just put that disclaimer out this out there. This is not what I do for a living. This is just a hobby of mine and I share my experiences with you guys here on YouTube. So let's go ahead and pull that trunk down and uh, see what's going on with this amp. All right, let's pull these seats down. <clears throat> So as you can see, it's in protection mode right now. So right now we're gonna hook up a multimeter. And we're gonna try to see what's going on here. If we have a loose connection somewhere. Again, I haven't touched this in six years, so I have no idea what I'm gonna run into here. I'm just documenting it as I go. I just wanna see what's wrong with this amp. So I'm hoping it's a loose connection and we will be able to see that with the multimeter. All right, since I've never used a multimeter ever, except back in like college a long time ago, I went and bought one for 10 bucks. So you guys can go get a cheap one. Works pretty easy. Okay, go ahead and fire the car up because we're gonna get a reading here on this amp. And it should be between 11 volts and 15 volts. Okay, you wanna set the multimeter to 20 volts. That's as close as you're gonna get on a 12 volt system for the best reading. So you're gonna take your positive terminal We'll go ahead and stick this on the ground and then stick this here on the positive and you should get between 11 and 15 volts. So it looks like we're getting 
a good reading there. So then we're going to take onto the signal wire, which is right here, and make sure it's also getting in between 11 and 15 volts. All right, that's not what I wanted to see. So it looks like we don't have a ground issue and we don't have a power issue. So it's what, I, what I'm guessing is what it is, is this amp is actually, after six years in the hot desert, it has decided to take a shit. But there's one last test you can do. And since I was lazy when I did this, I never labeled these, so I have to go back and label it, but I'm gonna have to pull off each one. And as you pull it off, if, if the amp decides to kick on, that means there must be a bad speaker uh, in the system somewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and do that test next, but I'm betting this amp is, is just shot. All right, I'm pleasantly surprised. The amp, on the very first one I guess, pulling off, the amp power light came back on and the speakers are working. So now I gotta figure out, obviously I guess the speaker must be blown, or there's a short to it. So we gotta figure out what to do here next. I know you could take the multimeter and run, and see if there's four ohms running to the speaker, which you can test these, but that's pure luck that the very first wire I pulled off, I hadn't even tried this before, and the amp kicks on. It's good news, good news. All right, so let's, just, so let's see what's going on here. All right, looks like I'm in luck today. I found out it's the back left 6x9 speaker that's not working, and it must have been maybe when I got some groceries or something, I must have hit this wire because I wiggled it a little bit, and then I plugged back in on the amp, and now everything works. So, wow, it actually, I was able to fix it. I figured, I thought after six years, a component had finally broke, because I hadn't touched anything. So that's why I taped these kind of up here a little high, so when groceries get back here, they don't touch it, but um, somehow maybe Jessica, when she threw some shit in here, she threw it hard and hit this. So it looks like I fixed the system. It's very weird that it would take almost a minute to kick on, and it would work perfectly fine. Now all of a sudden it kicks on automatically and works great. So hopefully that helps you guys. And uh, yeah. Okay, I'm pumped. Stereo is fixed. So if the multimeter, when you're doing the readings between 11 and 15, if they were out of range, that means you were having a power issue. Maybe a ground wasn't connected or something that I wasn't having that issue. Mine came to be in a speaker wire loose, which shorted out the system. So as you can tell here, I got my sound back. So I'll do it on today's video. Hopefully that helps you guys if your amp goes out and you were trying to figure out how to fix it. Um, I mean, that's a nice little tutorial to try to figure, uh, I guess you would say, troubleshooting steps as you go down the sequence. And I honestly thought I had a blown amp until I started disconnecting each speaker wire. And the very first one I disconnected, it happened to be that that speaker was the issue that was making the system go into protection mode. So this video ended up helping me because I got my system fixed and uh, hopefully it can help you guys. See you next video. Yes, the power light is solid. It's no longer in protection mode. Tyler. Tyler. Tyler.